Well, hopefully we're gonna have a lucky streak and hopefully starting with the hyena. So we've come to the back of where we were. So we're literally on the opposite side to where we were of the hyena den. And sharp-eyed Craig actually spotted Ntima, the little cub, um, which is just in the thick bush. And definitely the height helped. Uh, there was no way I could see her. I was literally trying to see where Timmer's just somewhere in the bush there. She it, she is popping her head up every so often. Um, but I don't want to get too close and disturb her. Uh, but then we do have Mother, who I can see why we couldn't see her from the other side, because she's very flat, and there's actually a little ridge of the termite mound just in front of her that would have hidden her. Because I was trying to work out how, how we weren't able to see her from there, but that's obviously why. So definitely uh, worth checking around the back of the hyena den and you can see the hyena den this side is in shadow and it's quite possible that the hyena den was actually in shadow where the female was lying but I'll see as the sun has crept over the sky uh, the female is now exposed so obviously she's enjoying the rays sunbathing it's not too hot for her at the moment there's a nice lack of breeze coming through and you can see the golden fur of her I, th I think she's actually not too old in a hyena because they do tend to get lighter with age and they do tend to get shorter fur with age as well so I think she's probably middle-aged as I say, I haven't really had a good look at her yet, so I'm just uh, taking from what I'm seeing at the moment. Now for these guys, nocturnal, ac nocturnal activity is the norm. But like we were saying, they do like to sleep and enjoy the sun as well. And Lisa! Lisa thinking it was a snake to begin with. Oh, uh, not a good place to land, buddy. <laughs> Franklin giving an alarm call and actually flying straight over to where the hyenas are. I really thought that would actually wake them up. <laughs> I wonder what actually disturbed. Yeah, hello, good morning, lady. <laughs> uh, the, um, the hyenas just looking up now over her shoulder to see what was all the commotion. <laughs> nah, not worth my bother. So I wonder what did disturb the Franklin. Well, apparently nothing too much, seems as the Franklin has decided to have a bit of a, a dust bathe. That's the first time she's lifted up her head since we've actually been here, so I wonder if she was in a very deep sleep. Oh, it is absolutely delightful, Tamara, soaking in the sun. Tamara also wishes she could be doing that, and it is. It's one of the best things in the world soaking in the African rays. I did wonder if she was going to uh, get up and reposition herself. And there goes the little one to go and join her. Oh, we might be lucky. She might go and suckle. Shall we go around to the front? Because it looks like they've gone around to the front of the den. We might be in luck. Looked like the cub was hungry. So we're going to reposition ourselves, see if we can get a better view. Slightly more open around the front as well. They are, aren't they snazzy? The hyenas are super pretty. And unfortunately I think hyenas get a bit of a bad press and a lot of people don't like hyenas. But you know what? A lot of documentaries, and I think The Lion King added to it as well, 
uh, that yes, hyenas are scavengers and they will steal kills, but hyenas are actually a very good predator in their own right. And lions will often steal kills from hyenas. And quite often what's been missed is the hyenas are actually trying to get their kill back off the lions. <laughs> that they are absolutely beautiful, especially when they're younger. They can look a little bit uh, <laughs> moth-eaten when they're less than. So we came in on that bit, so yes, if we'd have come in on the other side, we would have seen her there. There she is. There's the little one. <laughs> Hello. But yeah, I think we're gonna just keep pulling around. Oh, she's gonna go there, okay just in case she disappears. Now it is quite difficult to determine male and female hyena, so especially at such a young age. Generally speaking, females are a bit more boisterous than males. Um, females have a lot of testosterone in their body, uh, which actually helps them to outcompete the males. And because of that, uh, their genitalia actually looks like that of a male, which is very unusual, obviously, in the mammal world. Oh, yeah, a nice resting spot. You can see that's one of the favourites. That's actually where we saw them yesterday. A nice little pillow. And a very nice shadow. I miss the name, Dee Dee Gus. Oh, Geeky Geeky Beth, <laughs> great name, Geeky Beth. <laughs> so nocturnal, loves sleeping and loving the sun. Geeky Beth thinks that she's a hyena as well. <laughs> I wonder if you could hear the whistle of the bird that was just calling. Any sharp-eared people, if you could hear it. Hashtag Safari Live, what bird was just calling? I'll try and point it out again if it does call again. So yes, I believe uh, the, the bold nature of this cub. And incidentally, you can call uh, a hyena offspring, a pup or a cub. It's one of those funny ones that you can use either, either, because originally hyenas were in the dog order or sub order and uh, they got changed over into the cat sub order in the whole taxonomic grouping. So I think that's why you can actually call them pups or cubs, but I suppose technically now they're in the cat order, sub order. It would be better to call them cubs, but yeah. Z saying such a cute cub. It really is. But as I say, I think possibly the personality of this little one may have made people believe that it's a, a female, and that could possibly be. Um, it will also depend on the rank of the mother. So if the mother's a very high ranking female, then her offspring are more likely to be a lot more boisterous with other cubs because they are higher ranking. Even males will be quite boisterous towards the other cubs. Um, but yeah, as I say, if you can get two cubs together and, and you can see if one's more boisterous than the other, then that's a possibility that it's a female. But it's very, very difficult to sex a hyena. Hi Raphael, and um, good afternoon to you. Raphael wanting to know how old the cub actually is. Um, so it's nice and fluffy, and it's it's actually it does have its spots. So they they're actually born black, and they're usually quite small, little black creatures like this. They're so cute, and they start gaining their spots when they're about four months old. So this one's got quite a lot of spots, as you can see, uh, and it's started to go a bit lighter around the neck. So I would say it's probably around the six, seven, eighth month old uh, area 
So still very much reliant on mum's milk. They only really get weaned or start getting weaned uh, after a year, can be up to 18 months. So it's quite a long time that they will actually suck, suckle milk from the mother. Very rarely will hyenas bring anything back meat-wise to the den. So this little one will actually stay around the den. It won't join mum until it's over a year old out on the scavenging missions. So it's going to be keeping nice and safe close to those holes. So this is an old termite mound. Originally Aardvark would most likely have made those holes because they are the excavators of the bush. They've got huge claws and they can build these holes. They can actually dig something like a meter in 10 minutes. They are just absolutely amazing animals and they can dig six meters down to make themselves a bed chamber and then they dig holes into termite mounds to get at the termites. So once the termites have uh, been extinguished from that mound, then other animals can actually take over those holes and that's why you get the hyenas using the termite mounds and the holes. So they, they're going to be having quite a nice cool area in that hole but also the, the cubs will actually make a little area sort of scrape it away so only they can fit in there so if there are any predators around they can actually retreat back into the right at the back of that hole and hopefully keep nice and safe from predators while mum is away. Did we have anybody coming back with the whistle? Orange in the door. Sorry, I think I preempted your question there <laughs> about hyenas making the holes themselves. So not really. They've actually they don't have um, very long claws really. They are claws like dogs, and that's one reasons why they got placed in the dog suborder because they do look like a dog, and especially with the claws. Um, a lot of the members of the cat order are able to retract their claws, especially the true cats, or at least have nice sharp claws, but not the hyena. But it's all to do with uh, differences in the skull between the dogs and the cats. I wonder if that Franklin's making its way around and that's possibly what the little hyena is hearing. <laughs> Ah, Mansoup. There is a chin spot bat is calling, but that wasn't the bird. So I'm wondering if it was just a little bit too far. But chin spot bat is says three blind mice. Chin spot batis. So do listen out for that one as well. But this one was more like a whistle, like a Let's see if I can actually do it. No, that was rubbish. <laughs> so it was actually a grey hornbill, sounding like an admiral's whistle. So I think we're going to head to Byron. I think he's actually found something. <laughs> so good luck, enjoy, and I think it's a mammal this time. <laughs> it is indeed, Tara, um, a beautiful big male giraffe who is now moving away from us. <laughs> Actually, down in a drainage line, and we look, we're looking up at him, but uh, he's now moving off to through the thicket. Well, thank goodness you got a brief view of a giraffe with us. So we found something. We have found a mammal so far. It's a bit better than this morning. <laughs> a better start. Fortunately, he's not interested in hanging around. Now, how am I going to get out of this drainage line? I'm going to try reverse here quickly. Um, I'll just get back out. Senzo, let me know when I hit something.
Chinlin, you asked, is it a cat day? And you asked who is roaming the neighborhood that we should look out for. Well, this morning we had tracks of the, a mating pair of leopards. They were around yesterday morning. We didn't get to see them though, um, because we weren't out and the Mara show was on. But then yesterday afternoon, no one could find them. And last night we heard them right outside camp. They were very close to camp. They walk, walked and drank at, um, at uh, uh, Gauri Dam, the, or Voyatella Dam. Uh, we found tracks of them this morning, but we couldn't found, find them. They crossed into Arethusa, unfortunately. No lions were found this morning. So we, we don't know. I, Jinlin, I'm going to try and see. Maybe we find some leopard tracks a little bit later. That would be great. But uh, for the moment, for as we know, there were no cats on Juma this morning. But it does change and they do move around and especially during the day in winter, the cats do move around a lot more than usual. So maybe we're lucky and lions or leopards arrived sometime during the day. So we'll see and keep a lookout for fresh tracks. Boyzilla, you asked if most animals have a routine that they follow. No, not necessarily. I don't, I don't think so at all. I think the animals will go and drink when they are thirsty, not necessarily at specific times of the day. Um, I think predators will hunt when they are hungry, not necessarily at specific times of the day. Uh, I don't think there's a routine at all. Not at all. If it was, it would probably be a lot easier to find these animals. But it's not, so no, I don't think there is a routine. I think the only certainty out here is that um, at the moment our drives are from 3 in the afternoon to 6 in the afternoon and the mornings from uh, 6 in the morning to 9 in the morning. That's the only certainty. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to scan these drainage lines a little bit. Maybe we find a herd of elephant moving through the area. That would be great. Let's head back to Tara with those hyena at the den. <laughs> it is so true, Byron. The only certainty is the drive going out. Because <laughs> it is live. We have absolutely no idea what is going to happen. Now we were hoping to find the hyena snoozing. Some days you can come here and there's no movement and some days you can hit it lucky like we have done now. So there's mum. So you can see she is fairly light in colour but she still has quite a bit of fur on her. And so sometimes they almost look bold once they're very old. orange in the door another question from you which is great to hear asking how big the hyena packs can get now, it depends on the area that you work in and this is one of the things that I absolutely love about Safari Live is that we have a lot of different guides who have guided all over the different reserves and across the country in different countries as well because what can be true for one animal in one area can be completely different for the same animal in a different area because there's different things that are actually influencing them. So whether it's the weather, the seasons, 
the veg the different animals that might be there uh, some individuals can obviously be different and have different uh, characteristics uh, so there's a lot of things that can change uh, from one area to a next so that's really important um, you know sort of answering these type of questions and that's why it's really good to hear other people's uh, stories and experiences because the, the books that are out there were written usually by one or two people and that's uh, that's their experience as I say it's not necessarily taken into consideration what happens elsewhere so a lot of us have obviously guided here in the sands and then some of us have actually guided in smaller reserves, larger reserves, and that is going to have that impact. So here in the Sabi Sands, we don't tend to see the clans that big. Um, we, I think the largest clan uh, number that I, I know of here in the Sands, and maybe Byron can actually correct me, because I know he's done uh, some, some time here in the Sands on the southern side, uh, so they could even be slightly different there, but certainly around this area I've not seen more than sort of 10 adults or so, maybe 15 in the clan, something like that. In the Mara I believe they do actually have much larger clans, I think they could get up to 60. Um, but again, the, the, the Mara does actually have the numbers of animals to support the clan size. Now here, uh, there's, there is a lot of animals but not to the extent of the Mara. So the clan size, it's not going to be able to support that, that sort of size. So that's why it's going to be quite small still. So it'll be interesting to hear how many Byron's actually seen. Uh, so I wonder if we can bounce that over to him as well. But uh, as I say here, I remember there being a floppy ear. Some viewers might actually remember her. And she, we believe she was actually uh, the matriarch, uh, the high ranking female. But, uh, I'm not sure what's going on with the clan members now. I believe this is like a mid-ranking female. So I'm sure the guys would have seen the interactions and that's how you can tell where they are in the rank is the interactions with other hyenas, if they're submissive or if they're the dominant ones, if other hyenas come up to them and sniff them. Uh, if they are the dominant, as I say, the others come up to sniff. If they're submissive, they go to the higher ranking to smell them. So I think Byron has maybe got something in his sights. I'm hoping for you. <laughs>